strange things, stranger things. I'm running up that hill just like Max. I'm spazzing like a demo Gorgon on this track. Rest in peace to Eddie Munson. Please bring him back. Please do it for the fans and for those you can't. What is going on, everybody? We have a new official trailer or not even we have a new movie with the official trailer involving ryan coogler and my boy michael b jordan who i have a bone to pick with okay i was first introduced to michael b jordan through obviously the wire i've seen him on that show but what really caught me what really made me fall in love with his acting charisma and his chops was with um with creed but the first time was with Chronicle. Uh, that movie, when um, he played with the two other actors, they were in high school, they got the telekinetic powers from the mysterious um, extraterrestrial rock. Where's the sequel for Chronicle? We need that, please. I hate that he died in the movie, and so that Andrew. I feel like it'd be an awesome script if they were still alive. The power within them from the rock would probably bring them back to life. They need to do a script. One, the uh, the uh, his cousin, um, uh, his cousin, um, uh, I forgot his name. It's it, but it was a long time ago. His cousin's still alive. He's the only one who's alive. But we need a chronicle sequel ASAP. All you chronicle fans, y'all know what I'm talking about. If you don't know, check out the movie Chronicle. I love that movie so much. It's kind of like a. It's kind of like, um, f uh, you know, a camera footage type of style and, you know, cinematic style as well with the movie. So it cuts in and out of them having the camera watching all their progress with the powers and finding the rock and everything that leads up to the climactic end. I love that movie. It's dope. Hurry up with Chronicle 2 because I heard that it's going to be in the works soon, but y'all taking too long. Please hurry up with that. Uh, but back to this, uh, this Sinner's official trailer. I just, Michael B. Jordan, you get hate on him all you want. The way that he does things, uh, how, how, or the situation with him and the dating life. I don't get into all that with everything. I enjoy their work, but I was just very let down when it came to Black Panther 2. I was let down with Ryan Coogler, and I was let down with Michael B. Jordan, the part that he played in that movie. Just to come back as, uh, I guess... Just to come back in Shuri's vision to antagonize her and let her know that, oh, you have evil in your heart, and then he just disappears. I felt like when it came to Black Panther 2, the script that they should have done was Killmonger should have still been alive. Either he survived this, the wound that he got from T'Challa when they fought, or Dr. Voodoo could have brought him back to life, and he could... Basically, he should be the new Black Panther until T'Challa's son is old enough to take that mantle. Easy script. Easy script and have him fight. It should have been Killmonger versus Namor. Not Namor versus Shuri, bro. That fight just looks so weak. I couldn't... I couldn't... That fight didn't sit well with me. We needed a prominent black male Black Panther up in this thing. Or if anything, have Shuri and him fight side by side. You know what I'm saying? And she could show respect and be like, you know what? I'm not cut out for this. You're the better fighter. You've proven yourself, uh, Eric Killmonger. I want to give you the mantle of Black Panther until T'Challa's son is old enough. Take him under your wing. Teach him the way. Teach him the right way. You've redeemed yourself. You cleanse yourself of those sins. You are no longer Killmonger. You are Black Panther. You know? Woo, I just gave myself chills. Fuck. <laughs> See, bro, that's what a good script is about. But the way that they handled T'Challa slash Chadwick Boseman, rest in peace, the way that they handled his funeral scene in the movie as well, it was kind of like, oh, he's dead, here's a funeral. All right, let's go on, let's, let's move on. Damn, let it settle, let it simmer. Really make the whole movie about the passing. He's gone. In real life and in the f and in the film, bro, like it didn't hit me. Like I should have been sobbing. I should have been crying. Snot should have been coming up my nose. I should have been drinking snot, spitting everywhere. I should have been sobbing. Like it's it was the end of everything. That's how underwhelming Black Panther was to me, and that's how I think Black Panther two 
Well, I mean, that's how Underwhelming Black Panther 2 and how how it didn't reach up to expectations to me. Black Panther was such a great film. And for that to be the sequel, for Chadwick Boseman to pass, Black Panther 2 should have easily been the best Marvel standalone movie of all time. With what happened to Chadwick, the tribute they could have really gave, the script that they could have really done, reintroducing Black Panther through Killmonger, or just just leading up, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know what went wrong with Black Panther 2, but that is the bone that I have to pick with Ryan Coogler and, Kill, and, um, and Michael B. Jordan. I don't know if they had full control to do that movie, but yeah, man, that's the only blemish that they have on me to when it comes to that record. And Creed 3, Creed 3 was dope, but I just didn't like the fact that his mom passed like that in certain aspects of Creed 3. Creed 1 was awesome, Creed 2 was dope. I still I still like Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan. It's just that that Black Panther 2 really hurt me to where I'm like, fuck, bro, how do y'all fumble the bag so bad? There's certain people that do like it, that's fine, but majority, a lot of people that I spoke with, my friends, and most of the black community, they felt underwhelmed with Black Panther 2. It should have been hard, it sh that should have been legendary Marvel status for the situation that happened. So that is what I had to say on that. I know this movie revolves around Michael B. Jordan having a twin brother. And they're and they've been away from home for a long time, and now they're back, and their city is going under a very evil threat, a very vampiric threat. And so this is gonna be what a vampire thriller action movie, and man, we all know that Michael B. Jordan can act. We all know that Ryan Coogler can deliver, and this is an original film from both of them. You know what I'm saying? Starring both of them, so I already know this is gonna be lit. I love me some original movies. So we're going to hop into this, and if anything, someone put in the comments section down below. Sorry, guys, I'm going to go, and we're going to get to the reaction very soon, but this is one more thing I have to say about this. Someone said in the comments section for the, um, for this video, for this trailer on the Warner Brothers um, channel, they put in the comments section and said, which I 100% agree, this is a vampire type of movie. So you would have thought these two gentlemen being such big you know, big, established, prominent actors in the Marvel Universe. Why didn't they just let Ryan Coogler take the helm to direct Blade? You know what I'm saying? And, and have Michael B. Jordan probably help write Blade. This is a vampire movie from two huge guys who delivered a billion-dollar blockbuster hit with Black Panther, and you would think that they're doing a project like this. Where, where was y'all at for Blade? Y'all ain't give Ryan Coogler the blade? Let Michael B. Jordan help write hell even star in it? Like, what are we doing here? They had to go over to Warner Brothers and do a vampire film? That, I don't like that. Shade thrown. That's why I said, it's something weird. It's something weird. Uh, something felt weird with the Black Panther 2, the production and the script and the story and how it was executed. I still stick to, to this day. I don't know if Michael B. Jordan and Ryan Coogler are still cool with Marvel. I don't know, bro. I don't know. It just seems like when it comes to black actors in Disney, they get screwed. I'm tell you this right now, bro. I'm not trying to be racist, but the, the the proof is in the pudding. I even I even wrote down a video that I want to do very soon, to where I wrote down very key facts to why I think Disney might be racist towards black men. I'm gonna be honest with you, because. It seems like Blade will never happen. This is my number one, and I'm reading this off my notes, too, because I'm going to take that video very seriously. Black Panther 2 was a terrible tribute slash sequel, and that's a fact, Jack. Number three, Jonathan Majors got screwed multiverse style. He was built up through Loki. You built him through Quantumania, and because of the allegations in a video of him running from, running from his chick, he's running down the block. He's running from his life. He did not physically really hit her. He put her in the seat, and he's trying to get away from her. She's the one trying to cling on to this man like a crazy monkey, and he loses. He loses. He loses his role. That could have changed his his actor his acting prowess forever, because of a situation like that. 
y'all, I don't know, there's some, I, I don't like that. And I and I kind of feel like they stole X Men '97 from Bayo De Mayo, another prominent black man who presented, you know, such an epic first season of X Men '97. I think that's one of the best animated shows that Disney Plus has ever produced. One of the best animated shows I've ever seen. One of the best renditions of X Men I've ever seen. And now he is fired. He was the lead guy, the showrunner. He wrote that, so. I think they said he wrote season one and two. So I guess season two will be fire. But after season two, I hope it's not trash or I still because they said he was fired for very egregious sexual conduct or whatever like that. We don't really even know the full breakdown of what really happened. But all I know is he's gone and he gave us he delivered such a epic X-Men story through animation. And I have another, uh, and I have another problem with that. Y'all should have even never made X Men ninety seven. Y'all should let this man direct in an X Men movie. X Men ninety seven is what needs to be live action for X Men. If they made that X Men ninety seven first season into a live action series of films, Marvel is on fire. They're winning. That's how great that show is. And also, let's go to Finn. Let's go to John Boyega, aka Finn, getting cucked. By Kylo Ren. Finn got cucked by Kylo Ren, sir. He got cucked by Kylo Ren. We all knew that Finn was in love with Rey. I don't know if they were supposed to be a couple, but Rey's like, uh, no, I don't want your black sausage. I want this dark sausage on the dark side with Kylo. And I'm like, okay, you saw this man kill his father, but you still want... I, I guess evil is sexy. Evil is hot. It gets... It gets the juices flowing down the lady between the lady's legs when it comes to the dark side. But yeah, Finn got cucked and he got royally screwed. We all thought Finn was going to be a Jedi, a stormtrooper turned Jedi. We all thought he was going to be, I thought he was going to be, you know, Mace Windu's grandson. It could have been a Trinity. You got Palpatine's granddaughter. You got Darth Vader's grandson. And you got Mace Windu's grandson. He should have exacted revenge on Kylo. He should have cut his damn head off. Y'all should have made Finn go to the dark side because he's like, Ray, you betrayed me. You want this guy? And he killed my grandfather. I'm going to, I'm going to, they should have made him slice um, Kylo's head off and be, uh, and have him and Ray fighting each other or something. He should have been something way bigger than what we got when it came to Finn. Totally blasphemous waste of a character, bro. He even was showed signs of him being force sensitive. I'm sorry guys for going so off the rails when it comes to black men and Marvel and Disney, but it needs to be said and I will be doing a full video on that so you'll watch out. But without further ado guys, I'm so sorry for this long rant. I just had to put that out there cuz I am extremely extremely I can't even speak. I am extremely upset when it comes to Disney and Marvel handling their black men, their black actors, bruh, and their black products. But let's hop into this. Let's check out Sinner, Sinner's official trailer. And you know Michael B. had to get fit. He's always fit. He can't even roll his cigarette. <laughs> okay, my boy got the Tommy gun. I've been all over this world. Is that a rattlesnake? I've seen me and Doug. Oh, B-15. Ways I ain't even know was possible. I like the accent. Hey, brother. Be careful. I will. <laughs> That's tight, man. With all the things that I've seen. Yes, director of Black Panther and Creed. I ain't never seen no demons. So he got attacked by a vampire. No ghosts. Haley Steinfeld. Okay, we got some Hawkeye in here. No man. Some Kate Bischoff. That's Yo, some good man. acting. You could see the fear in his eyes. Can you get back inside. Stop! Isn't that a Forrest Whitaker's son? We got we got Black Panther. Let me we got. Hear, Mac. Some weird shit going on out here. You 
keep dancing with the devil. Oh, what was behind him? Oh, he's in here too? Bro. One day he's gonna follow you home. Ty, he's letting that thing unload and ring. Now see that. It's funny. I saw the Thunder we watched I just uploaded my Thunderbolts trailer reaction the other day. This is how you, this it's funny how these these uh, companies get things mixed up. This should have been Sinner's teaser trailer and the Thunderbolts movie should have been an official trailer, not a teaser trailer. This is a tease for sure. I can't even this is a good this is a great official trailer, but it's more like a teaser cuz it shows you the characters, but you hear the creepy music, you see that he has a twin brother, but you really don't know what's going on unless you look, you know, you look up and research what the movie's about, which again, this is a, a vampire movie, I guess where the town is being terrorized by vampires and they're trying to fight back. You see Forrest Whitaker's son is in here, Michael B. Jordan is in here, Killmonger, we got Kate Bischoff from Hawkeye in here. Got a lot of got got some some Marvel people in here, you know what I'm saying? Got some Marvel director, you know, Black Panther big guy, you know, Creed director. This movie's fire. I don't even, I could already tell you this is gonna be lit and I don't even have to watch it. You see the actors in here? They got my boy from I forgot his name, but he's another good black prominent actor. Um they have B fifteen in here. We got Loki up in here representing. This movie is going to be tight, bro. This movie is going to be fire, dude. We need some more original films like this. Hey, bro, Warner Brothers is out here slaying it. Warner Brothers is out here trying to show Disney how to do original content. Uh, Yeah, they're slaying it with Penguin. Now they have that Mickey 17, which I didn't react to, even though it, it looks weird and funny, but it looks like it's going to be a good original film. It's glad I'm glad to see certain Hollywood companies going back to originality. Instead of conforming to rehashes, sequels, remakes, and all that stuff. Bruh, be original, please. So I'm glad that Warner Brothers has Sinners. They have Mickey 17. And who, who knows what else they got coming through. You know what I'm saying? So, shout out to Warner Brothers for that. This movie looks tight. I've said enough, bro. <laughs> I hope you guys, you know, are enjoying the extra rants and content. And conversations that I'd be having because it's really from the bottom of my heart I'm, I'm a real big fan of cinema in general I write music I like to write scripts I like to see good stories I like to see good dialogue awesome scripts I like to see directors really take it to that next level cinema is forever evolving scripts need to evolve act acting you know acting chops need to evolve performances are evolving things are at a certain peak that they just have to they have to be at peak. And when I know that they could do better, they can do better because they've already done better. So guys, this movie looks like it's an A plus already. I'm in. I'm I'm so in. I can't wait for the next trailer. I don't want them to show really show the vampire like that. Don't show too much. That's crazy. We got a movie like Sinners about vampires and then we have the Wolfman movie. We're really eating out here, dude, for like any wolf or any any monster fanatics are really eating right now. They got Wolfman, Sinners, and you know, again, Warner Brothers is really doing it with the original with the original films. So that's tight. And that's it, man. This movie looks this movie's A plus off rip. I already tell I can already tell this is gonna be an epic an epic vampire original film. Uh, so shouts out to Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan. Please prove me right. Please. But guys, if you're new to the channel, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. I can't even speak. I just got off of work, guys. So bear with me. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share, comment, and subscribe again. I love you guys so much. Thank you for getting me to 1600. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. I love you all. Mwah. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of y'all day. Peace. She got that bougie goo. I ran up a check on you. I pull up in the farm with you. I just might cop a ring for you. I might give you a baby or two.